Cyberwar, Hypothetical for Teaching ICT Ethics, by Tom Worthington, The Higher Education Whisperer.com. This presentation is unclassified. All scenario data is notional, and for exercise only. Briefing by Cyberspace Operations Wing, at Headquarters Joint Operations Command, 1230 Zulu, 1 April 2017. At 2.20 Zulu, 1 April 2017, one of our maritime surveillance aircraft was reported missing. The aircraft was conducting a freedom of navigation flyover on one of the reefs, subject to claim by several nations. The last recorded radio transcripts are Unidentified military aircraft, you are entering a restricted zone. Turn now to avoid unfortunate consequences. We are over international waters, in accordance with accepted law. Unidentified military aircraft, turn back now. This is your last warning. Mayday, 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 this is Surveillance 105 Charlie Delta, 100 km southeast of. Transmission ends. Intercepts from our new signals intelligence aircraft, which was on a test flight in the area, reported signals from a fire control radar, shortly before communication was lost. The radar was in test mode, however, the older radar warning receiver in our maritime surveillance aircraft is not sophisticated enough to distinguish a test signal from a real attack. Our aircraft's flares and electronic countermeasures were activated. This may have been mistaken for the launch of a cruise missile, which our aircraft can carry, but was not. A surface-to-air missile was launched and our aircraft appears to have crashed while maneuvering to avoid the missile. The crew have been rescued by a civilian vessel, but have not yet been debriefed. The media are reporting that one of our unarmed aircraft has been shot down and the government has asked for military options to respond. The best kinetic solution is a precision air attack on the missile batteries, guided by special forces landed from a submarine, which is already on station. However, the government has also asked for a cyber option which would disrupt the opposing forces systems, show our national resolve, but avoid casualties. It is proposed to target the opposing forces electronic control systems. This is expected to disable electrical systems and cause some local electrical fires. Our intelligence assets in the area will arrange for video of the damage to be posted to social media, for maximum news value. We will be working with civilian government personnel with special expertise, to prepare a human factor attack on their Internet of Things. Discussion. The hypothetical scenario presented is based on real events. In 2015 an Australian military aircraft was challenged by radio while on patrol. In 2010 the Stuxnet computer worm was released, apparently designed to destroy a nuclear processing facility, but spread worldwide. In 2014 five military officers were charged with hacking to obtain trade secrets. Henschke, 2014, points out that the purpose of a cyberweapon is to attack an information system in order to perpetrate harm. Cyber warfare attacks do not necessarily need sophisticated computer code. A human factor attack is where someone within the organization being attacked is tricked into providing information or access. In 2013 invitations to apply to a supposed government-endorsed child care center were sent to employees of an intelligence agency. An attached form was designed to collect personal information which could be used for later attacks. What will you do? Suppose you are a senior incident responder, in the Digital Protection Group, at the Digital Transformation Office, of the government. Your job is protecting the whole of government website. Recently you detected a sophisticated attack and boasted, we could turn that attack back on them. So you are now asked to do just that, despite being a civilian employee. You are reasonably sure you can mount a cyber attack which will have the desired political effect, it will disrupt systems of the opposing force enough to cause public embarrassment to their government, with minimum risk of casualties. But can you be sure its effects will be confined to government systems, or to that country? What if the attack shuts down hospitals in their country, or across the world? Is it ethical to be involved in planning such an attack? Would your answer be different, if you are a civilian contractor rather than a government employee, or if you were a military officer? Note that the hypothetical scenario does not say what country is planning the attack, or who they are attacking, does it make a difference to your answer who is attacking who? Note that you are not asked to become an expert on the Geneva Conventions, or the laws of war. However, as a professional, you need to be aware of the ethical implications of what you choose to do, or not do, in your work. For bibliography and notes, search for, Cyberwar, Hypothetical for Teaching ICT Ethics, at Tom Worthington's, higher education whisperer.com.